Hi guys, uh, my name is Elina Sinelnikova. I am a founder of CryptoChicks and we have a pre-recorded for you the session for Blockchain 101 for all ETH Denver hackers, participants, innovators, uh, and we hope that you're going to become an expert just right after one hour. Before we go into the webinar, uh, I, I will share with you just some of the perks that we have for it denver and these are the uh so you can enter our crypto chicks hatchery the program that we created for our uh, for the projects for the hackathon projects to test your ideas before you organize and become a business and in this in the crypto chicks hatchery we actually have price for those who implement AVI in their platforms, in their projects. Uh, so AVI is going to be you know, collecting all these projects that we have in the high cherry uh, with AVI and uh, selecting the winner and giving $2,000. So please join to get the $2,000. And also we are running a contest right now uh, for our friends uh, in Portis and uh, we giving away three keep keys wallets for those uh, who share their love for Portis in Twitter. Uh, all the rules are in the cryptochicks.ca contest. So please go ahead and uh, look into it and receive a wallet. And also we have a CryptoChicks Academy. Uh, you can reach us at cryptochicksacademy.com and there are uh, courses like this, Blockchain 101, um, many courses on the cryptocurrency, on building the decentralized apps, and also if you are planning to build a business from your hack, so this, there are courses about that. So on that, uh, please enjoy the presentation, Blockchain 101, and you can reach us at any time at stay in touch at cryptochicks.ca. Thank you for listening. So what we are going to learn, we're going to learn today a blockchain about cryptocurrency. Also, we're going to go through basics of cryptography, very easy. Uh, uh, on the, we also go, are going to stop on a crypto economy model, on application and examples of the blockchain for business. And so without further ado, blockchain, what is it? Just the other day, I talked to uh, one person and uh, that told her about you know, blockchain and Bitcoin. And she said, oh, I've never even heard about it. I said, like, oh, go look it up. And the next day she came to me and said, I looked it up, but I couldn't understand anything. So there you go. What is a blockchain? Very simple. Blockchain is a database. It's a structured set of data in on from information that organized in a certain way. That's what it is. Very, very simple. And you guys, I know that you deal uh, uh, with the databases every day. All social media, let's say all your pictures on the Instagram, they all store it in a database on Instagram server. Facebook, your posts, your pictures, they everything is stored again, stored uh, on in a Facebook server. Server is a big, huge computer located somewhere in a secure building that owned by you know Instagram or owned by Facebook or owned by Google, right? So, so this is this is what database is a structured set of data on a computer. But how blockchain is different? As opposed to all this, you know, Instagram, Facebook, Google, blockchain is a decentralized database. It means that it's not located on one computer, but on thousands and thousands of computers that are spread all over the world. So it's, it, it, uh, these computers belong to people like this, so like anyone, anyone, anyone can own the computer with a blockchain database. And computer where blockchain database located is called a node. So, and what, even you can be a owner of the node and you can own the blockchain database. What do you need from that? In order to do it, 
you just download the program from the internet. And today we're going to be talking about Bitcoin a lot because Bitcoin was the very, very, very first blockchain that was invented and that came to the existence and that very successful and exists um, for 10 years already. So in order to own a node or be the owner of the blockchain database, all you need to, to do is go and download uh, the application from uh, the website. And after you download, you will have a files on your computer and voila, you have you are owner of the blockchain node. And inside this database is a transaction ledger. It means like, for, for example, for the Bitcoin, uh, this is just a list of the transaction when people transfer in Bitcoin to each other from one, uh, one account to another. In essence, that's what inside a Bitcoin database, inside these files. You can go, you can look into these files, you can see all these transactions and you can be the owner of the node. And since all the computers that, you know, people own these computers and they are loading and they talk to each other, these computers as well, they are connected with something, right? So all these computers are connected with, uh, and I ask, sometimes I ask on my lectures, so right now uh, you can type in the, uh, in the chat what you guess why, how these computers are connected between each other. You know, computers that are owned by people, that are located in their homes, um, that talk to each other, how are they connected between each other? Uh, just type it in the chat and uh, I would like to see answers from you. Type it, uh, select to everyone or you can send it to me, uh, it doesn't matter. So how are they connected? Yes, I would like to see some answers here. Uh, and just a reminder, so blockchain is a database that same database stored on all these computers belongs to people uh, located in their home. Uh, thank you, Dior, you said it through the network. Network, exactly, it's the network, but we all know this network. Just which network specific? It is, is, it is a almost correct answer. So I, I want a little bit blockchain P2P network internet. Thank you so much. This is an internet. Yes, 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 yes. Internet. So all these computers are connected with internet. The answer is very simple and obvious, right? So the, but the main thing about decentralization that these computers are not belong to anyone, like any company in particular, and that's the power of it, right? So there's no company, there's no CEO that next, like the next day are either going to die or they close the company or sell the company and then blockchain is going to end, right? So, so this is, uh, <laughs> thank you, Sina, <laughs> Whisper Protocol. Uh, this, that's uh, a great answer. So uh, yes, so all these computers are connected with an internet. So you can imagine computers connected with the internet belong to people. There's no single party or single company that controls it. Uh, and, and let's imagine, so how you can even I mean, influence or let's say destroy the blockchain, right? So let's say that I'm a president of one country uh, and I say, you know, my people are not allowed to use blockchain database anymore. And uh, let's say that people comply actually. And what is going to happen to the blockchain in this case? Yeah, did you, did you see what happened? So, so here I, uh, I again, I, I'm doing back and forth. You already guessed what country I'm talking about. So, what? Pretty much nothing happened to the blockchain. If even unless unless uh, all you know presidents, all leaders of all countries are uh, unite and going to prohibit blockchain altogether. In this case, maybe. Maybe we have, uh, you know, the, the blockchain is going to be affected. But when it's going to happen, when the leaders of all the countries agree between each other, I guess it's never going to happen. So pretty much the blockchain is safe this way. But uh, there is other ways that I thought how it could be destroyed, uh, for example, like this. But even though if, if only one computer still survives, we still have a blockchain database. So pretty much the blockchain is undestroyable. So this is the power of this technology and power of it in decentralization.
as well. Uh, so blockchain, it is a database. Uh, inside this database, and then we're talking about Bitcoin, it's public ledger of the information. And this is decentralized. It's owned by no one or at the same time owned by everyone. So everyone who can download, uh, install it on your computer can own the database. Uh, all these computers are connected through the internet. And because of the decentralized nature of blockchain, it's nearly impossible to destroy it or prohibit it. Uh, I would like to get into a little bit into, into a blockchain explorers demo. So explorers are the program that are available also through the internet uh, that can uh, give you an idea of what is located inside. So the transactions, let's say the Bitcoin transactions. If you go to blockchain.com slash explore, you can see all the transactions that are in in a blockchain, uh, in, in a Bitcoin database. See, so these are, these are the transactions. So let me just uh, uh, quickly refresh it. So these are the transactions that uh, were made. Yeah, let's say so the time. So in when people say, oh, Bitcoin was used to just hide, like with, by the drug dealers or by the, um, you know, the bad people to hide their money and then to put, but it's just, there's nothing more transparent than a blockchain. You can see every transaction, every like, uh, everything is very, very trackable. So that's why when people say that this is used by um, people who would like to hide their money, this is the, that, this is kind of a very laughable. So it's not, oh, you see, and then there's a very big transaction that was just made like $1 million, so that, there you go. And you can see all these transactions, but in this transaction, you see there's no uh, personal information, right? So there's no personal information. This is uh, what blockchain as well. It provides you uh, anonymity, but nevertheless, uh, you can track uh, all the transactions in there. A police is doing that very well, by the way. So uh, I worked for a police uh, for um, 20 years and uh, I know just recently I did like last year I did a workshop there and they are doing a very good job actually. Like there are applications that track in very well all the transactions in a Bitcoin database. So this is a nonsense when people say this is untrackable. It's very, very traceable. Uh, there are other blockchains that exist, not only Bitcoin. And for example, here is Ethereum. Also, you can see all the transactions that were made uh, in the last like, 15 seconds. Uh, so you can also get all the transactions as well because this is very open uh, located on the people's computers everyone can see it so this is one of the powers of the blockchain going back to our presentation cryptocurrency and that's bring us to the uh, to the question what the cryptocurrency is so cryptocurrency this is a digital or virtual currency that is uh, information of which is stored on a blockchain and it's protected by cryptography. So yes, yeah, so, so digital uh, money protected by cryptography and information of it located on a blockchain. There are lots and lots of cryptocurrencies and lots of blockchains available uh, right now for you. We're going to cover a few of them in this presentation. Uh, and also how like why why even like how even digital money is possible right because uh, nowadays um there are 90 percent 95 percent of all money are digital so if you didn't know all the banks that there, there's the the cash is not it's only five percent of the money uh now uh, all the money 95 percent of the money in the world are different oh sorry the digit they are digital uh, but what blockchain, how it is even related and how it's provide um, uh, functionality so the digital money becomes actually a money because if they're digital, let's say that you send uh, $1 by email to someone, how do we like, you can send in dollar by email again and again and again, but uh, the transaction ledger, the record of all transaction, that's what exactly is preventing and solving the double spending problem. And that's how this, the money became become money because there's no double spending because everything is recorded. And uh, blockchain rec records are very, very secure. We're going to go uh, through security and cryptography that used there. It's much more secure that databases of the banks 
uh, and it's also unbreakable and unhackable with a modern technology right now. Uh, so, yes, the security of the records inside blockchain is protected by cryptography and solved by the cryptography. That's why this, this technology is very fascinating. And uh, without further ado, basics of cryptography. So what is a cryptography? Actually, it's a very, very easy thing. Uh, I took the word crypto and uh, I applied a cryptographic algorithm that's called inversion. And on the right side, I got a cryptographic hash. So this is the representation, kind of like encoded um, version of the word crypto. You see, it's very easy for, with inversion. It's just all the letters uh, in, in the opposite order, right? So, and this is the cryptographic hash. That's what I have on the right side. In a, in a Bitcoin database, uh, we use SHA-256 uh, algorithm. It's different than from inversion, of course, uh, but this is the this algorithm is converting, uh, you know, any word, any file, any information into seemingly random string of letters and numbers. Uh, so SHA secure hash and algorithm two five six. So in this case, the word crypto becomes a representation of this thing, a string of seemingly random letters and numbers on the uh, right side. So this is a cryptographic cache. So all information inside uh, Bitcoin is uh, using this hashing, uh, using this hashing algorithm and protected. So in order to, let's say that all the hackers, usually how they do it, they reverse engineer in order to hack. Uh, in order to convert this hash or uh, encoding of this word crypto back into word crypto, the hacker would spend this number of seconds, uh, 5.03, in the power of 66, uh, exponential power 66, a uh, number of seconds. So you will say, oh, what is this number? I don't even know math. Yeah, you don't need to know. It's just the below it, which is the lesser number for sure, is the number of seconds since the beginning of our universe. So that's how strong the cryptography inside the uh, Bitcoin right now, inside the blockchain right now. So very, very strong. And that's why Bitcoin was not hacked. So it's not, so there was no possibility even for any hacker to um, hack the information inside a database, or like to compromise it or to create uh, false records or something like that, because the cryptography is so, so strong there. Again, inside database, it's a transaction ledger, and we say so. And this is uh, money transferring between the accounts. Money is a Bitcoin; it's the cryptocurrency. And usually, you are getting uh, kind of like uh, acquainted with a blockchain once you install a wallet, so digital wallet. Uh, and what, what is the crypto wallet? What is the digital wallet? This is program that you install and run on your computer. This program is connected on a blockchain. And honestly, once you connect it, once you install it, it's, uh, it, you be, you, your computer becomes a node as well. So you are having a blockchain node. You download in blockchain and database on your computer. Uh, so a wallet software uh, creates an account for you by giving you a private key. Private key is a representation of your account, but actually, and as well, a password. The private key is something that's very, very, very important and also gives you an account number symbol, similar to the bank account. And no one can access your money. No one can spend the money from your account unless they have a private key. And because this is also, you see this database is not by owned by anyone, by any bank, by any company, by anyone, uh, you are the sole owner of this account and no one, unless they have your private key, no one can access uh, your account and no one can access your money. You also have to distinguish between two types of wallet. There are non-custodial wallets. This is where you own your private key and this is where you uh, own your money. And there are custodial wallets. It's 
you you probably you will have a password for your account, but you don't have a private key. Uh, but the wallet provider is, is uh, most commonly is a company actually who um, owns the private key and just manages your funds for you. So this is something you, you need to distinguish between those because these are the ones that when you hear on the internet when they say oh I got scammed or I got hacked and everything so this is uh, most of the cases that the people who did not have even a private key to their accounts right so they uh, were given the power of managing their money to some other company and of course you know the company the company they can go down it can happen anything with the company nothing will happen to the blockchain but if something happened to the company and they uh, they can of course you know take away your money but if you own a private key then no one ever ever can take away your money and your funds how is it uh, possible again it is possible with a uh, cryptography uh, inside a blockchain again so as i said so the the account representation is a private key and once you install your wallet you're being given this private key this is you see the private key Again, this is seemingly random string of letters and numbers. From this private key, uh, you can actually uh, receive uh, with the with the hashing algorithm. You can receive the account number, but in, you you can never receive a private key, calculate private key from the account number again because of the cryptography, because of this you know beginning of the, of the universe uh, number of seconds. There is not possible to do reverse engineer account number. People have to know your account number because you know otherwise how they can transfer you money. Uh, but the private key, private key is something that you protect uh, uh, with your uh, as as much as much as you can. Uh, but in inside blockchain, how is it even working with the private key? Because the technology inside blockchain is made uh, every transaction that let's say that I'm transferring money like one Bitcoin to someone else. I have to, my wallet software have to sign each transaction with a private key. So there is a digital signature that attached to the transaction and only then it's, it is valid. And it's automatically validated by the blockchain database. Everything is automatic there. There's again, there's nobody, it's, it's programmed. It's programmed, it's automatic, but unless there is this digital signature attached to this transaction, uh, money, cannot go away from the account, right? So like, because a blockchain database right away invalidates um, all the non-signed or signed with the wrong uh, private key uh, transactions. Um, so th this is the protection level number one, cryptographic signatures. Protection level number two, it has something to do how is information organized inside. As we say that this is inside is a transaction ledger, but actually it's not stored as one long list of the transactions, but instead it is every few minutes it gets organized into the blocks. And that's where validators or miners come into the play, because uh, validators, miners, they are creating that uh, every few few uh, minutes for some blockchains, it's every few seconds. They are taking all the new transaction that comes in and they are building a block from it. And once the block is built and recorded, that's it, it's set in stone and nothing, nothing ever can be changed inside the block. And... Uh, it, it is a protection level, again, number two, so, and uh, built by the miner. And inside the blockchain, there is this uh, cryptography, the, sorry, crypto economic model that incentify miners. Miners, that's by the way, also the programs like a wallets that you can download and run on your node, uh, which are building these blocks of information, which is, uh, collecting a transaction and building blocks from these transactions. And there is incentive penalty that uh, allows miners to actually run uh, these nodes and to, to want to run these nodes and to be incentivized to build a blocks. Uh, in, and the premise of it, miner has to do a significant investment 
for a chance of a reward because every block that they built is getting uh, rewarded. So with every block that they build, a new money getting produced. So that's why, uh, for, for example, the Bitcoin uh, miners, they are investing like millions of dollars actually into equipment uh, for a chance of a reward. So all of them, there are lots of miners in the network. They all competing for the uh, possibility to build a block. And the first one who builds a block, the first one who builds the block of the transactions getting a reward. Reward is quite, quite substantial. We're going to show it to you a little bit later. It's quite substantial. So that's why everybody, all the miners, you know, thousands of miners in the network, they are competing for this reward. So what this uh, competition is about. The competition algorithm, uh, we call it the proof of work. So the miners have to uh, basically solve a riddle in order to build the block. In the essence, what miners do when building the block, they get in a transaction, all the new transactions, they're combining them into the block of transaction, and they need to calculate a, a hash of this block, which is, again, using this secure hashing algorithm 256, they have to calculate this, uh, you know, string of letters and numbers. But this is very, very easy, like you would say, right? And then there would be no competition. You just boom, you calculate, and that's it. You know, you win your uh, reward for the block money. But this is where blockchain difficulty rule comes in place, which is also programmed inside the blockchain. And right now, in the Bitcoin blockchain difficulty rule uh, states that it has to start, so your the hash has to start with uh, 18 zeros. 18 zeros, no other hashes are accepted. So what miner has to do, miner has to guess the number, just the number that he needs to add to this block of transactions. So the resulting hash would have 18 zeros in front. So miner is basically playing a guessing game. Uh, so, for example, if he adds zero, then uh, so you see, miner gets three zeros uh, as the result in hash. Not good enough. We need 18, right? So, okay, let's try one. Oh, six zeros. So getting close. That's good. Two. Oops, no zeros. And so on and so forth. Miner trying and trying and trying and trying numbers in the, in the, you know in a different order maybe. Uh, it depends how he chooses, but until finally, finally, he gets this hash that is satisfied to the blockchain difficulty rule. And whoever first in the network, the first miner in the network that gets this correct hash, uh, gets a reward. Reward is 6.25 Bitcoin. So once a miner builds a block and calculates the hash that is correct, Miner gets 6.25 Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin worth, uh, as of today, I think like about 20,000 Canadian dollars. So you do the math. That's how much the block costs so for, for this money. Uh, there are lots of miners that are competing. And you probably even you know received emails for some Bitcoin mining. Um, scams this that's how i how I, uh, I tell them like would you like to invest into the bitcoin mining bitcoin mining is a very legit business but of course if you're getting emails from people that asking you to invest into this so most uh, of the time it's a scam we're going to be talking about it a little bit more as well when we get to the business that are running on the blockchain so there you go. So once miner builds the block, the first one, first one in the network uh, of these computers uh, builds the correct block, gets this reward. And that's why miners need all this money to invest into equipment because uh, remember how they are uh, guessing the numbers. So they need all the power and all the computer power in order to fast loop through the numbers faster. Right. So, and the ones that have, you know, most money invested into this probably have the higher probability of winning this competition. So, this is what miners do. And uh, crypto economy model inside a Bitcoin, inside all the blockchains, they are very. It's very fascinating because 
uh, you see, that's why we don't need any single company that you know supports all these computers or supports uh, the uh, mining uh, miners because this is this system is uh, self-supporting. Um, right now, I took the a period of time when Bitcoin was going down in the price. So you see like it was very kind of depressing moment for all the crypto community when all the crypto was going down and down. Right now it's completely opposite right now. So Bitcoin is like crazy going up, uh, but it's not the point. So I, I took this on purpose to show you that um, how actually the crypto economy model inside um, Bitcoin works. Let's, let's say the price is going down and down and down and down. Uh, but what this is a number of miners graphics. So this is number of miners. You see, so once the price, uh, the number of miners was still going up in the um, in the network. It means that it was still worth for miners to put money into that in order to get the profit from mining, right? So, but at a certain point when Bitcoin went, uh, let's say about I don't know, six, seven thousand, uh, maybe a little bit less than it for miners. It became um, not as profitable anymore. And the number of miners started dropping from the network. So just people started closing their businesses uh, of the mining and they started dropping from the network. But what network did in a response, it's automatically adjusted a blockchain difficulty rule, right? So this is a blockchain difficulty. So once number of miners drops from the network, again, so this database is watches and seeing how many miners are there. So if there are miners are dropping, a number of miners decreased, system automatically adjusted blockchain difficulty. And you see number of miners started growing up again because, because since difficulty decreases, it's, it became easier to build a block. So they, they could easily, uh, easier make this money, the block reward. So the minor, number of miners increases. And the miners are the ones that are creating those blocks. In the essence, they are creating the records. And that's how its uh, uh, blockchain is uh, uh, solve this self-support problem without any single company regulating, you know, sending people here, sending people there, so all automatic, all programmed inside. There you go. And uh, even though the price of the Bitcoin was going down, the adoption was still going up because they see the number of transactions was go constantly going up and up and up in, uh, in the Bitcoin database. So, uh, there you go. So the price, even you see the price not even affecting the adoption. Uh, I mean, more and more uh, people using uh, Bitcoin every day and all other blockchains as well. Uh, so it's like price investment, that doesn't matter. But there's another level of protection. Why we are right now looking at all the levels of protection and just to give you an idea how secure and how self-supporting uh, the blockchain is inside out and how it is uh, supporting itself without any single party or in any single part, uh, company doing that. All the blocks that miner are built, they also connected to each other. This is protection level number three. So chain of blocks, and that's how it called blockchain. Uh, you see all the uh, the the hash of the previous block is included in every subsequent block as well. Therefore, if you made any changes in the, in a block, let's say like any hacker that live long enough that you know, since the beginning of our universe, um, still made a change to the block. He needs to make changes to all the subsequent blocks because all the other blocks will be invalidated uh, um, right away because the hashes will be different with every change. So therefore, there is this protection, uh, like another level of the protection. And you see in the blue, in the light blue, we have a list of the transaction. In the green, this is a nonce, this is the nonsense. This is the number that miner adds to the block to calculate the correct hash. And the, uh, the blue, uh, the dark blue is the cryptographic hash of the, of the block. So the chain of the blocks provides the maximum maximum security and that is how uh, information transactional information organized in the blockchain as a chain of these blocks that contains transactions and this is done for the security purposes. 
Oh yes, I would like to uh, demo you very quickly the visual visualization of uh, the different blocks. So I have uh, here. Oh, first of all, so we have the, the visualization on the transactions and blocks that are being created in the world. You see, so that's uh, uh, you can go to blocks with with the, the dot eat. Uh, and uh, you can uh, see the visualization of all the blocks that are created in a uh, Bitcoin. Uh, there is also a visualization of uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Ethereum is another blockchain. We're just going to look at it uh, in a few seconds. Uh, so this is a visualization that how the blocks are building. You see this: the people that are boarding the uh, buses. These are the transactions, and uh, every every block that is built is uh, every bus that it takes off is the block that. Um, succeeded that calculated the hash and that's are written into the blockchain database so you can see it for ethereum and on the right side for bitcoin moving on Uh, there is also a protection level number four in a blockchain and this is a transaction fees uh, I get asked the question why uh, blockchain owners are so greedy that they need to charge a transaction fee on for every transaction. It's actually is done for protection again for the protection of the whole system. Uh, otherwise, if the hacker, let's say, if there's this, uh, uh, if the blockchain like it, uh, has no fees, no transaction fees, then it's very very easy to spam you can just transfer money from one account uh, back and forth back and forth back and forth between two accounts and spam the network very easy that's why as as the anti spam model uh, every transaction is cost money it still costs like it's not like a bank fees but you know hundreds times less uh, but there is a fee that still need to pay but for the hackers it's and for the spammers it's actually a big deal so they cannot uh, create millions of you know records and transactions uh, for free right so they need to pay for each transaction and all the transaction fees are also going to uh, the miners so the miner not only getting a reward for the block, which is 6.25 Bitcoin, but it also gets uh, all the transaction fees from all the transactions that are included in the block. All right, so we're going to look into three examples of the blockchain that nowadays are um, like the most popular, I would say. Uh, so that is Bitcoin. Bitcoin was created in 2009 as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system uh, with the uh, thought to replace a bank uh, banking system. And um, it, it was created by Satoshi Nakamoto. I have a picture of him here. And, uh, but of course, this is a joke. This is not Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, the truth is we still don't know who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Uh, there are lots of... Um, um, I mean, conspiracy theory that going around. So maybe it was an organization. Uh, we, we don't know who he is. Uh, we know that um, there was certain emails from certain person that named himself Satoshi Nakamoto that actually created the, he was very first miner as well. But after 20, uh, 11, he disappeared. He said that he's not longer, um, uh, will be working with, uh, Bitcoin uh, and he disappeared, but all his money that are from the mining, from everything that are collected to this account, to the first account that mined uh, Bitcoin, which have right now billions of dollars in there, uh, it actually the, the, all this money stay intact. It's not sold. It's uh, it stayed there, and we still don't know who Satoshi is, but something that he invented is very, very fascinating, and this is revolutionary technology, and it's going to be technology of the future. 
Maybe he came from the future. There's one of the conspiracy theories as well. All right. So then Bitcoin is a decentralized. So there is no owner uh, of this, you know, computers that are there. So there's it belongs to people. Uh, coins are released by mining. Uh, so every every time it creates the block, as I said, 6.25 Bitcoin getting released. Uh, uh, money is uh, protected by cryptography. There is a crypto economic model incentive penalty that are embedded into this Bitcoin blockchain and uh, usage 300,000 transactions per day. Actually, that was uh, an old number. So right now it's much more. Uh, next example of the blockchain is Ethereum. So this is different. Of course, this Ethereum can be used as money too, but uh, this blockchain right now is probably right. It's the most popular and most usable. Uh, you can create applications, you know, on all these computers that are running nodes, right? So you can create applications that are actually not like you know Facebook that has a central company, but applications that are working between people. So peer-to-peer -peer applications, how we use it, or how we say it. And it was created in 2015 by Vitalik Buterin. Vitalik Buterin is a real person, and uh, we we all know him very well uh, so he but it's uh, ethereum database is also decentralized uh, no uh, owner and coins released by mining uh, money protected by cryptography and uh, there is incentive penalty model and money re uh, coins released it uh, we call it it released by mining as well and ethereum is also fascinating because you can create because you can program on this network, you can create, you can program your own cryptocurrency. And that's what companies right now is widely, widely doing it, uh, widely doing it uh, to, uh, to creating their own coins, their own currency and using their own currency in their business. I'm going to be talking about that. The third one is uh, Ripple. And this is, I uh, guess you have to be very uh, aware uh, about the different blockchains that right now are getting released. You need to very much look into the details because Ripple is um, uh, different from the previous two, uh, even though it's, was, it is called itself blockchain and it uh, was released as the payment and currency exchange system and was uh, released uh, for the banks. It was targeting the banks for the intra uh, for, for the gross settlement and the currency exchange and remittance, uh, but it is uh, centralized because the coins are released by a company. And this is what, again, this is how it's different. So it's not, it's not decentralized, even though it's blockchains and the information inside is organized as a chain uh, and protected by cryptography, but there is no crypto economic model and 60% of the coins that always will be owned by Ripple, which is, is a company. And there is, so this blockchain doesn't have a, a decentralization power. Businesses that right now, that's very, very like first ones that are came on a, a blockchain technology, mining. Of course, uh, we already talked about mining. This is a real businesses. People are investing money into equipment. They are setting a mining rigs. Uh, they are uh, setting up in the countries where the cheaper, uh, with the cheaper electricity. For the Bitcoin, it's a proof of work. Ethereum right now, it's a proof of stake. It's a difference. You don't need the power, but you will need to buy currency and put it uh, as a stake, some kind of deposit, and then um, program automatically assigned uh, using the probability uh, factor, the, um, the assign the, the right to do the block reward depending on how much you stake. Um, so, and again, if you receive emails, from people say that uh, Bitcoin or whatever it is, like crypto investments, uh, give us your money and we will make you millions. And I will, I made millions, such and such. Again, so this the blockchain is very decentralized. You don't need to pay money to people, right? Because this is all automatic, all decentralized. Uh, so be careful to actually giving your money to strangers. If you do, 
uh, like in any like it doesn't even like blockchain not blockchain um crypto not crypto if you go if you're giving money to strangers you opening whole can of worms for scammers so yeah don't give away money uh, if you would like to uh, purchase crypto or uh, do your own mining business please research and also do during our q a session we can explain you a little bit more how it works but don't give your money to strangers trading because uh, of the high high volatility and as well uh, people are making you know uh, because uh, the volatility of all cryptocurrencies uh, very high and also the cryptocurrencies are growing in price and maybe it's falling in price uh, you know every minute uh, there is the whole business that around trading there is traders that trade in cryptocurrencies and they are you know some of them making lots of money some of them losing lots of money so this is a trading but this is another business that is built using a blockchain of course the investments also the business that uh uh, built so there are companies that actually invest for you but again uh our take on it uh, so you, you study you invest and you do your own investments you don't rely on any company to do it for you because this is not blo what blockchain is blockchain is all about decentralization not uh centralizing all your money into you know some companies exchanges uh there are companies that are exchanging your crypto in for two like let's say real money uh, us dollars canadian dollars uh, uh euros any any kind of there are lots of them as well uh, that are running they are businesses and we see uh, again every time in the news you see like oh I was scammed or was hacked. Some uh, exchanges and their companies, their websites, they're getting hacked. But it's nothing to do with the hacking a blockchain. It's nothing to do with hacking a crypto. It has to hack, it just has, it has to do with hacking their own security of their website. So when you are um, on exchange, the rule of the thumb that you are uh, don't leave your money on exchange you transfer in and out because you have your wallet you can transfer money from uh, exchange right away in one second right and same thing you can transfer money to exchange you you do your uh, transaction and you transfer money from it you don't hold money there so it would not get so the website would not get hacked crowdfunding as i said on ethereum you can create your own cryptocurrency we call it a token and there's lots of companies that are selling their tokens they are uh, making the promises to their investors to um, that they do such and such project they release their own cryptocurrency and they sell their cryptocurrency on either on exchange or through the private sales or they do that let's say the airdrops uh, so you, and they funding their business through this cryptocurrencies Gaming, uh, lots of popular right now games. One of them were CryptoKitties. Uh, you can create actually unique artifacts again on Ethereum blockchain. This technology allows you to create a digital art artifact, you know, like how you paint a picture, but it's not the real picture, it's a digital picture. You can paint it there, but it's unique and you can sell it in, uh, uh, you can uh, sell, resell, own, and there is a value to this unique artifact and you can earn or trade them in the game. Financial systems, again, right now, uh, there's lots of decentralized finance uh, systems that are uh, getting released. Same way we are doing borrowing lending in the bank, uh, same way it's done right now in cryptocurrencies. People, again, some of the people earning lots of money, you know, doing all this lending and borrowing, and it's called in the decentralized finance. And this is uh, also very popular businesses right now registries because of this openness because you see all the transactions in um, uh, in the blockchain database are very open uh, so it solves the problem of the registries especially for the third world countries where there's no uh, let's say land title registries or um, birth registrations so something like this so this is uh, already solving the problem or oh, refugees uh, refugee system because they are cross borders and the blockchains are cross borders of course uh, so these systems are very popular and use the blockchain for the registrations on on the blockchain so this is you don't need to use you know any government or anything like this you register on the blockchain and uh, you can be accepted in every country 
tracking. Uh, for example, for tracking donations, where your money goes to, uh, again, tracking refugees, supply chain, you know, all the products between the companies when they're getting, uh, getting shipped uh, in a supply chain. Uh, so that the tracking is done through the blockchain, and this is very good use case for our blockchain right now. Voting uh, again. So if you do the voting, and especially uh, the voting, this it's independent, and it can be vote votes can be recorded and seen on the blockchain, and uh, it's. Uh, can be make sure that there is no duplicate vote from the same person. So this is uh, also a good use case for the blockchain. Uh, intellectual property. So you can protect if you've created some kind of research or file or the picture or painting or, you know, some some digital art. You can uh, register it on the on the blockchain and uh, can prove that this is you were the first one that uh, the registered to get because it's all trackable in there. Oh, actually, we have a quick demo of it. So Tracy, please uh, chime in and uh, go ahead uh, and show the how to protect your IP. CryptoChix built uh, MVP, uh, uh, and we're going to show it to you quickly on how to how to protect and how it works, how it would work to protect your IP on the blockchain. Yeah, okay. So um, looking at the CryptoChix blockchain MVP, um, this is a solution that CryptoChix has seen um, many people struggle with when they try to implement blockchain technology into their business or startup. And that's um, looking to use blockchain to store data, whether it's yours or for your customer. Um, by using blockchain, you can protect your data and your or and or your IP. And that's what CryptoChix has done here, which is um, basically complete the functionality and you can pretty much plug in what we've done here to your website to be able to do that. So let me just show you how it would work. If you head over to the website mvp.cryptochickshatchery.com, you would be taken to the site that you see here. And once you're on here, you can log in or create an account. It's very easy. Um, you just put in an email and a password, you're done. I already have my account set up and I'm logged in. Once you, you have that done, you can head over to register on blockchain that you see at the top here. Once you click on that, you can scroll to the bottom and pretty much do what you always see when you input data. Just um, upload some files. So maybe for you, it could be like customer orders if they're ordering something and you don't you don't want to make sure people can see it because the customer can have sensitive information like their address, their phone numbers. You could put in your name. And a description of what it is. So let's say like t-shirt orders. Then we click save to blockchain. It takes a bit of time. And once it's saved, you can scroll down here. We'll refresh. It'll say that you'll receive an email, but we don't have set, we don't have that set up yet. But it does confirm that it's been saved to the blockchain. And you can click here to see a list of all the all the data that was uploaded through this MVP that we created. So this is a list of what they call it is transactions on the site. So it takes a bit of time for it to show up. Yeah, you can see it right here. Um, so it actually identifies each transaction by a hash. So this is the details of the hash if you click on it. You can scroll to the bottom, say see more. And this is actually the data that I uploaded just then. Um, obviously it looks very confusing. So you can view it as UTF-8. And from here, you can see this is the file I uploaded in the form of a hash, my name, uh, the date that I uploaded, the files, and the description that I left for it. You also notice that the data here doesn't actually include your IP. And that's actually how, by using blockchain, you protect the IP of your users or yourself. Um, because you may have remembered when Elena explained before how blockchain uses the hash function of the SHA-256, 
um, it takes the input that you give it, and depending on the content of the input, it will give you this this long string here, this hash, right? And if you make even a small change to the input, it can give you a drastic change to the output. And so in that way, the hash function is actually very sensitive to small changes. Um, and that's why it doesn't need your IP because it can uniquely identify each upload by the uh, content that you upload. So even if I were to, under the same account with the exact same content, upload the same thing, it would actually give a different hash. And uh, that's actually the quick overview that I have for the blockchain MVP. So now I'm gonna pass it back to Elena. Thank you, Tracy. All right, and uh, we had this demo. Uh, and also there is uh, this, you know, also we can build on the blockchain a rewards program again. So including the token, the cryptocurrency as the reward, uh, gig economy to pay because uh, it's uh, everything is programmed there and uh, safe and there's no need for, let's say for the lawyer or for the escrow. So the gig economy systems uh, as well right now is a very popular for the freelancers, for the contractors badge system, reputation system, charity, as we say, to track and collect donations, uh, real estate. So right now, right, uh, currently actually real estate, the houses are getting purchased uh, using uh, Bitcoin as well. Uh, so this is this is all the uh, could be applications of the blockchain technology. Uh, you can, we uh, um, conduct a lot of hackathons and you can uh, uh, Google CryptoChicks dev post to see all the ideas that we, uh, our um, participants had and built on the blockchain. Uh, also for other ideas, you can go to these links. Of course, we're going to send you this presentation and uh, you can also go and check on all the links as well. There's lots and tons and tons of the blockchain applications that are blockchain use cases that are popular right now and what can be built on the blockchain. Uh, again, so we uh, have went through majority of the cases. So there is like, for example, the games, the exchanges, the gig economy. Uh, so the fundraising, lots of companies right now that are using it in their business. Again, uh, for you to check this out or maybe to run the, your idea on what you can build on the blockchain or how you your business can benefit from the blockchain. Lots of businesses can benefit by, you know, tracking the data on the blockchain, you know, putting your data in there for everybody uh, to see or maybe to, again, to protect your IP. This is the most, uh, um, the majority of the companies do with the blockchain nowadays and as well, the majority of the companies do the uh, fundraising as well using a blockchain. Uh, we also would like to include one more demo for today for you uh, to send you some, you know, money using a wallet. So we're going to demo a digital wallet uh, because we talked about how you would uh, connect to the blockchain, how you uh, get in a private key and everything. So uh, Tracy has a demo for you and we can send you also some money this way. So Tracy, please go ahead with your demo. Okay, so just very quick, I don't know if we will have time to actually go through everything, but uh, what I'm going to do is demo the Portis wallet and actually hopefully anyone who is able to follow along create a wallet themselves and I will be able to send you some cryptocurrency. Um, so if you actually head over to uh, wallet.portis.io, um, it will take you to a login page, but you can actually create the wallet very easily. Uh, so I don't know if you can see my screen here. Yeah, yes, we can see. Uh, can you ah. see the login page? Uh, no, login page we cannot see. Okay, uh, yeah, that might not be able to show, uh, but we'll, it will take you to a login page. You will see at the bottom that it says to create a new wallet. It's very simple. You just put in an email and then a password and you will have a wallet. Um, nothing else is really needed, and you will be taken to a screen that you see here. 
And also Portis wallet is non-custodial. It's the, that's where you actually have your private key. Uh, and uh, so, so you will have a possibility to actually using the menu to extract your private key. And you also can re-import your private key and to uh, the wallet software. But the, the, this wallet allows you to own your money, to have your money in your pocket. Go ahead. Yep. So uh, hopefully uh, you guys have a wallet set up. Once you do, if you are on the screen, you will see that you have some currencies on the screen, but not quite like mine. And that's because you will need to go to, at the bottom right, there's a menu button. So if you click that and scroll down, it will say show test networks. So by default, when you create your wallet, it's off. Um, you will need to turn this on to be able to follow along. So you just click that there. I already have mine on and that'll be done. And you can close your menu. So you'll be back on the screen and you'll notice that now you have all the currencies that I have. What we're going to be sending is Ropsten. So if you can just find it on your screen and just click on it. So like this, you will be taken to the screen here. It says send or receive on the Ropsten screen. You will click receive. And so here it will show you your wallet address. From here, you just click copy and then your wallet's address will be copied, send it in the chat and I'll be able to send you some Robson. Some ETH on Robson network. So this is some test um, the cryptocurrency that we can send it to you so you can uh, right away see it in your wallet. Uh, yeah, so if you guys set up your wallet and you click on this receive, please feel free to send us over chat uh, your uh, account uh, and then we can send you the, um, the crypto. can send you some money. Uh, you can also, because we right now um, maybe running out of time, we can do it on our QA session. Uh, you can also use our WhatsApp to send uh, your address there. Uh, you can also uh, do it by email, stay in touch at cryptochicks.ca, uh, or, or you can join our QA session. Again, if I didn't say that, yeah. So uh, we will be continuing right now uh, our presentation, which is almost done. So if you guys are still working with your wallet and send your, um, address, please do so in the chat and Tracy will send you a money. All right, so how to buy, because this is the question that everybody asks us, so how to buy cryptocurrency right now. There are lots of trading platforms and the one that we use, for example, it's a Kraken um, and they just introduced, they just released information that they are selling crypto using a credit card. So you just can Google, that's Kraken.com. Uh, this exchange we use for a long time now. And uh, this is something that we recommend to use uh, for you as well. Uh, just recently, Wealthsimple and PayPal, they also introduced the capability for you to buy crypto, to buy Bitcoin, to buy Ethereum and uh, to invest. But be careful with those two, because right now, as of now, what they did, they are doing a custodial wallet. It means that they are storing this crypto for you, which is we say, like, right? So remember, this is not, uh, you don't own your private key. It's going to be uh, in their wallet. Uh, and you also will not be able to transfer your money, like your digital money, your crypto, your Bitcoin, your Ethereum to another wallet if you use Wealthsimple and PayPal. No, you know, not many people know that, but we just, uh, you know, telling you because um, we are the experts in this. So probably they will introduce this functionality down the road. But right now, if you buy a crypto using PayPal or Wealthsimple, you will not be able to transfer it into your wallet, but you will be able to buy and sell it there. And because this companies are probably quite well off and maybe will not be crashing tomorrow, you know, going out of business tomorrow. Maybe it's pretty safe to do it with them. But again, there is no guarantees. The guarantees would be to if you have your own wallet, if you have your own private key and you own it and this is then, you know, set, set in stone, but uh, not with the non-custodial wallets. So today we learned about blockchain. 
We'll learn about cryptocurrency. We went through the basics of cryptography and we'll learn about crypto economics model. And we also went through applications and examples. 